In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. In this type of analysis, uh, each subject is typically exposed to two or more different conditions or is being measured on the same outcome uh, three or more times. So in this example, we're going to look at data where we have 22 subjects that are undergoing treatment for blood pressure. Um, and so we're going to measure their systolic blood pressure before they begin the treatment measure them halfway through the treatment period, and then measure them at the completion of the treatment period. So all subjects are receiving the same treatment and we're being measured on the outcome, in this case a numeric outcome, blood pressure, on three different time points. We have several assumptions that we need to uh, adhere to when we do the one-way repeated measures ANOVA. And the first has to do with the level of measurement. So we're assuming the outcome is either an interval or ratio scale. We're also assuming that the sampling uh, has some level of randomization, either random selection or random assignment. We're also assuming that the data are independent of one another. In other words, each observation or measurement is not influenced by any other observation or measurement. We also assume that there is a normal distribution within our outcome data. If we have met all of the assumptions, then our data and our uh, design is appropriate for the one-way repeated measures ANOVA. So again, to summarize the data we have, we have three measurement points of systolic blood pressure at a pre-test, a mid-treatment, and then a post-test time point. So in order to run the analysis, we go to the Analyze menu. Go to General Linear Model, and then Repeated Measures. So the first thing we have to do is name our within subject factor. Um, SPSS calls it factor one, but we could name it something else if we choose. Uh, you want to try and make it as descriptive as possible, so we might name this time, because that's actually what we're measuring is the effect of the passage of time on our different outcomes. And the number of levels will be the number of measurement points that we have. So we have three levels or three measurement time points. You can have more than three. Uh, but we, we have three in this example. Then we click Add. So now we see our variable is represented as time with three levels or three time points. Then we click Define. The next thing we need to do is move our columns of data into the Within Subjects Variables box. And so typically we want to move these over in order that they were conducted. In this case, there was a time dependency here, so we want to move pre-test, mid-treatment, and then post-test over into uh, the three box, or into that within subjects box. Next, we click on the options button, and we want to ask for descriptive statistics, and we also want to ask for estimates of effect size that are found in this display area. And if we want to have post hoc tests, which we're assuming we're going to need post hoc tests, again, if we have an overall statistical significance with the ANOVA, then we can do post hocs to see which time points are different from the other time points. So we'd be able to see is, is pretest different from mid treatment, is mid treatment different from post treatment, and so on. So in order to ask for those post hocs, we need to highlight time in this upper box, this factor and factor interaction box move it over to the display means for box and then click compare main effects now just under that you'll see a, a drop down menu light up and then we want to choose the Bonferroni confidence interval adjustment in order to do our post hoc test and we're choosing Bonferroni because this is a repeated measures design and Bonferroni post hocs are designed to deal with repeated measures designs once we've selected those, we go ahead and click Continue, and then we click OK. Now our next step is to then interpret the output, and one thing you'll notice with this particular analysis, we get a lot of rather complex looking output, um, and this includes a test for the assumption of sphericity. And the sphericity assumption requires that the variance of the population difference scores for any two conditions, in other words, the difference in the scores for any two conditions, are the same as the variance 
of the population different scores for any other two conditions. This is known as uh, the, the assumption of sphericity, and we test this using Mockley's test of sphericity. Now, if this assumption is violated, we can examine the ANOVA using the multivariate statistics table, uh, and this does not require sphericity. So as we go through the output, you'll see as to whether or not we've violated this assumption of sphericity, and if, it, if we have, then we're able to um, kind of bypass that and account for that by looking at the multivariate test outputs. So the first thing we want to look at is the descriptive statistics. So we can see here are the means for each of our three time points. So the mean blood pressure at the pretest was 165 millimeters of mercury. At the mid-treatment it was 153 and then post-test 145. So the first thing we need to determine is whether or not there is a statistically significant difference somewhere among these three time points. But before we do that, let's go ahead and examine whether we've violated the assumption of sphericity using Mockley's test of sphericity. And what we're going to look for is the significance level uh, in this table, the SIG column in this table. If that p-value or that significance value is less than 0.05, then we violated the assumption of sphericity. In this case, our significance level is 0 0.006, so we have definitely violated that assumption of sphericity. And this is basically suggesting to us that there was a change in comp uh, was a change in blood pressure scores across the three different time periods. Now, the next thing we can examine is for the overall test of significance. So we're going to use Wilkes Lambda. And so we follow that across, and here's the F score for Wilkes Lambda. And then here is the significance value. So this is less than 0.05, indicating that we have uh, statistical significance. There are differences among our three time points at the less than 0.05 level. And so again, this is suggesting there is definitely a change in blood pressure scores across our three time periods. We can also look at the partial eta squared, which gives us an idea of the effect size. And using the guidelines suggested by Cohen, uh, this 0 0.701 partial eta squared is considered to be a, a large, as a matter of fact, a very large effect size. Now because we have statistical significance overall in this analysis, we can now go to the pairwise comparisons and try and determine which time points are different from each other. And so as we look at time point number one, compared to time point number two, we can see that this value is less than 0.05, so there is a, st a statistical significant difference between time point one and time point two. So blood pressure decreased by a statistically significant amount from pre pre-test to mid-treatment test. Then we can examine from time point one to time point number three, and we can see that there is also a statistical significant uh, significance in the difference between those two time points. And then the last set would be time point two to time point three, and again we're seeing that statistical significance. So we can conclude from this that the blood pressure decreased at a statistically significant level from pre-test to mid-treatment and from mid-treatment to post-test. So the conclusion we could make is that overall the treatment had a statistically significant effect on blood pressure across the three time points. And within those three time points there was a statistically significant difference between time point one and two and two and three. So to summarize we learned how to do a one-way repeated measures ANOVA in order to determine the effect of a treatment or to look at differences in measurements across three or more time points. So hopefully you've uh, learned something in this video and you're able to use this video successfully in your own research.